Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about how to create and use a three-dimensional array or how to go about using multi-dimensional arrays in Java. So as you can see from this image, we talked about 1D array which is having just one axis. Then we talked about 2D arrays in the last session where we had rows and columns basically an x-axis and a y-axis. And then we can also have a 3D array, which will have three axes, which will have an x-axis, a y-axis, and also a z-axis. Think of a simple box, which uh, every box in this world will always have at least three dimensions. And from, from here, you can go even build more complex arrays, which can have four dimensions or five dimensions or as many dimensions as you want it to have. And today we are going to look at an example of how can we build a 3D array and how do we access those elements. But this picture is just to show you the mental model of when you will be creating a 3D array. So for example, generally an image data is stored in, in three dimensions. So you, can, you might want to store the image data into a 3D array. And there can be many other use cases in the mathematical and research computational use cases where you might want to use a 3D array. So, but remember there's an X axis, there's a Y axis, and then there's a third axis, which is called the Z axis. So let us look at a Java program to understand how we can build a three dimensional array. And for that, I have created this class, which is called multi-dimensional array. It has a entry point method, which is the public static void main method. And then I have created an integer array and this time, instead of one or two square brackets, I have three square brackets. And if you remember, I mentioned this in the previous session as well, the number of square brackets which you're going to put while initializing the array is the number of dimensions of the array. And since in this particular program, I'm going to demonstrate a three dimensional array, that's why you see three square box boxes. Let me just minimize this, yep. Yeah. So we have three square boxes here and we have created the variable name as ARR or short form as array. Then we start with the outermost curly braces as is. Then we put another curly braces which starts from here and it ends here. Then another set of curly braces which starts from here and end here. So this is the this is the first dimension. This is the second dimensions and these are the third dimensions. That's how you are going to define the different dimensions. Remember this is the first dimension when the first curly brace starts. Then you have this second dimension, which covers this hole and this hole. And then you have third dimension, which are these. So that's how you're going to visualize and, and put the three dimensions in use while declaring a three dimensional array. And the values work in the same fashion. It's, it's a zero index based position. So since we do not have an official name for the third dimension, so I'm just gonna use X axis, Y axis and Z axis to refer to the three axes. So this would be X of zero, this would be Y of zero, and this would be Z of zero. Similarly, X of one, Y of one, and Z of one, and so on and so forth. So now if I try to access the value which is at zeroth X position, first Y position, and second Z position, what's the value do we get here? Let's run this program and understand and interpret the output. Okay, uh, so when we ran this program, we got the output as 11. So let's understand this output. So when we say the zeroth position on X, the first position on Y, and the second position on Z. So this is the zeroth position on X, and this is the first position on Y, and then this element is 0, 1, 2, is the second position on the z axis so to to describe it in a nutshell this defines the x axis so we have two elements on the x axis here this one and this one then we have two elements on the y axis on each x axis so this is one this is two on the first x axis and this is one and this is two on the second y uh, second x axis so two x and two y and then on the z axis I have three elements each. So hope this helps you understand and visualize this. 
So x axis and this one is other x axis and then y axis, y axis, and then in elements inside this are z axis. So I'm saying zeroth x axis in this block, first on the y axis, which is this block, and then second element or the z or second position element on this particular axis in this particular block, which is 11. And that's why we get 11. If I print zero, let's say I, I change this particular value as one. So now the output should be coming from this side. So second x position because it's one second y position so this will go here and then the two position which is the third element of the z axis which is 13 so let's see if we get 13 yes we get 13 here so this is just to show you how you can interpret this particular array and always be mindful of how you are structuring this array if your structure is gone wrong then your program will become useless and it will give you a lot of unpredictable outputs which might not make sense and which may introduce errors in your program. So be very careful how you define the structure of the elements here. That's the key. And after that, you just need to understand the X axis, the Y axis and the Z axis. Always remember all the axes start from zero. So when I say two, I'm basically referring to the third element and not the second element. So this is all I wanted to cover in this particular session where we describe how we can use a three dimensional array and from here, you can go to any lens. Like I said, you can add more square brackets here and go to four dimension or five dimension or six dimension. But remember, the more dimensions you add, the more complexity of the program will be having. The program will become more and more difficult to debug and understand. So always try to take a wise call as to how many dimensions you want to use in your array. And that's it for this particular session. In the next session, we are going to talk about the different loop statements in Java. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated. And do not forget to subscribe to Simply Code for more programming related videos. Thank you, and we'll meet again in the next lecture.